I'm so happy that you're here, Alexander. Thank you, Steffi. Uh, honestly, I feel like a complete idiot. Uh, as my Steffi pointed out, like, no one can resist my mother, nor even I. So I was ordered to be here, and I didn't know it was about healthcare. So if you're expecting something about healthcare, I know zero. I'm the car rental guy who rents cars. And honestly speaking, I'm even a bigger idiot uh, for actually coming here today, because um, before me there was this brilliant neuroscientist talking, and uh, I just read an article on my way over here, and it analyzed the attention spam of the audience during a speech. And he found out that there's a correlation between the time of the day, the nationality of the speaker, who was speaking before me. So I'm a German, that's always a very, very bad sign. <laughs> I'm speaking in the afternoon, I think I'm the last speaker, or almost the last one, so very, very bad sign. Putting all the equation into one, after 20 seconds, I already lost 20% of you guys. After two minutes, I lost 40%. And after five minutes, I lost 75%. The only positive news is, out of those 75%, 60% will engage in sexual daydreaming. So I, hopefully, there's something in for everybody. And for even if you're not interested in car rental, maybe I can give you a brief outlook. So what is sixth? Most of you guys probably know us by our advertising. Um, we comment on social, political environments quite drastically. Um, actually, five years ago, we commented that we'll accept the Drachme. It was quite prophetic. Uh, I received death wishes, death notes, uh, kidnapping threats. Um, I had to apologize now if everything is back in order. And maybe we will have the Drachme shortly. But this is not sixth. Basically, we have three segments, uh, car rental segment, leasing segment, and what we call sixth ventures. Um, total group revenue is just roughly about 1.8 million uh, billion uh, euros. Uh, we are in the car rental segment, the number two in Europe, uh, the most profitable car rental company in the world. Um, car rental is roughly about 1.1 billion. Um, we expanded on our biggest adventure to the United States. The United States market is by far the largest car rental market on this planet, about 25 billion in market size. Miami Airport itself has about 35,000 cars, so that's about the size of our fleet in Germany. And we kicked some ass. Uh, we uh, achieved a market share in Miami of 8 to 12 percent, and we already achieved somewhere in the range of 150 million, re million revenues in the United States, and by far the most fastest growing segment of our business. The second segment is leasing. Um, pretty straightforward. We do finance leasing, full service leasing for big fleets, but we also sell new, and, uh, new cars to the end consumer, providing financing, full service leasing, that kind of thing. Uh, we're doing about 2,500 units a month, so we are the biggest car dealer in Germany. Um, we, that was my biggest adventure in my career. We IPO'd that business uh, in May. Uh, we floated on the Frankfurt Stock Exchange for 450 million. It's been a hell of a ride for three months. And what I'm going to talk about today is what we call uh, six ventures. We currently have about 48 companies in our portfolio. We invest in everything across the board um, from uh, C stage to Series A stages. We do a lot of mobility stuff, and the most prominent examples are Drive Now and My Driver. But we do everything. Uh, we do the restaurant platform, which was the biggest internet exit in Germany for the last three years, Quandu. We sold that to a Japanese uh, um, investment company. So we're always looking out for any interesting investment opportunity there is to expand our business. I'm going to skip that a little bit. That's uh, a bragging chart, but maybe something. We are a family-owned company. 60% um, uh, of the voting stock is still controlled by my family. And the only differentiating factor to any larger corporate or venture business, we are very, very long-term oriented. So uh, equity base is roughly 27%. That's 800 million in equity. So our competitors are somewhere between 3 and 4%, though. We have a very, very long breath um, uh, to survive the occasional hiccup. So what is changing in the urban mobility segment? Well. Um, just over the weekend, I, I read a book about Thomas Edison, and when he first produced his first incandescent light bulb in Mellon Park in 1879, he said, we're going to make electricity so cheap that only the rich people can afford to burn candles. So compared to our segment, would be we're going to make mobility so cheap that only the rich people can afford to buy cars. Why is that? The car is probably the most underutilized asset on this planet. It's driven on average an hour a day, 23 hours a day, it's parked on the side of the road therefore achieving utilization of roughly 4%. The current paradigm of car ownership is based on a world of unconnected cars and unconnected drivers. So the only way to guarantee individual mobility is with the flat-out ownership of a 30,000 US dollar worth of asset. 
That's a gigantic waste of capital. Imagine, there are about 1 billion cars out there in the world, representing a total value of 20 trillion US dollars. That's about the size of the GDP of the United States. And all this product of labor, machinery, productivity, research and development, tools, is only achieving utilization of 4%. Maybe to put it the other way around, 1 billion cars times 365 days times one hour a day, that's 365 billion hours driven. That's huge. But it kind of masks the 8.4 trillion hours that the cars are not driven. So it seems to me, you know, everybody knows that by owning a car is a depreciating asset, but it seems to me that the people who buy cars are wasting an enormous amount of capital. And a lot of the venture companies, they, they saw this trend, and I, I think it's, it's breathtaking the amount of capital that goes in there. The four largest car rental companies in the world, they grew by 25 billion over the last 60 years. The investments in urban mobility, Uber and so forth, they grew by almost 50 billion now. This chart is already outdated in the last four years. You could argue whether or not the valuation of Uber is justified or not. I have my very own private thought about that. But investors are seeing a tremendous disruptive potential in the urban mobility segment. And how do you react to it? Well, basically, there are two mega trends out there, and everybody knows them. And I'm just going to put two, three figures out there to make it more haptic. In 2007, for the very first time, more people lived in urban areas than in rural areas. By the year 2025, 86% of the total world population will live in urban areas. This will have tremendous effects on waste management, logistics, but first and foremost on mobility. The investments in urban mobilities will triple from now 300 billion to almost 900 billion in the next three years. I think the availability of mobility will be the number one investment criterion for large companies to invest in a city. The second mega trend is a change of values. Just a very, everybody read the articles that everybody's changing, but just one key fact. In 2005, 51% of the 18 to 29 year olds owned a car. In 2015, that number has dropped to only 21%. So if a grandma gives her grandson a gift present for his 18th birthday for 900 bucks, he has two choices buy himself a VW Golf 4 or an iPhone 6. Battery still sucks on both. But in general, he will go for the iPhone 6. How did we react to that? Well, we founded Drive Now in 2011. Uh, when we did that with our dear partner, BMW, it's a 50-50 joint venture. Everybody's laughing at us. Nobody was doing anything in car sharing. Nobody would think you can make money on it. The entire car sharing market in Germany had about 170,000 members. Drive Now alone has up till now 480,000 members. So Drive Now alone quadrupled the entire German car sharing market. We're making double digit amount of revenues, million amount of revenues in, car, in Drive Now, and we are profitable. That's another differentiating factor about a lot of startups here. And I think, why is that? Because we focused on product so extensively. You know, the old world car sharing was, you know, you had to, uh, you had that designated parking spot where you could pick up the car and bring back the car at this designated parking spot, you had a safe in the car, we had to open up the car, pick up the car, it was a disaster. With Drive Now, you just locate the car by your phone, you open up the car by your phone, you sit in the car, you drop it off and pick it up wherever you like. We have in Berlin about 1,400 cars now distributed throughout the city, you just hop in and drive in. The only reason why we can't expand any further, because the public legislator, the municipalities, don't give us a parking space. That's the only reason. We would love to expand it even further. The second venture um, is my driver. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a narcissist. Uh, I like to compete with Uber. <laughs> but we compete with Uber on a different scale. Uh, we focus on two different axes. First of all, we focus on a B2B segment, a purely B2B segment. Why B2B? Because um, the largest unmanaged spend category for a travel manager is taxi. You still hand in your cash receipt, you still hand on your cash, nobody has any control what happens, no travel policy, no nothing. Nobody has a clue what was going on in taxi. So by integrating it into the travel booking system, travel policy management, we have a competitive edge. 
The second reason is the sheer size. Uh, a large industrial company out of Munich, they own, their annual current spend is roughly 25 million, their yearly taxi spend is 125 million. My former employer, a consulting company uh, in Germany, their annual current spend is one and a half million, their taxi spend is six million. So we like to focus on what we can do as corporate customers. And the second differentiating factor is we own our own fleet, and why is that? Um, I think the bi biggest misconception about Uber is that Uber works in every city. It does not. It simply does not. Why is that? In, Uber works perfectly well, especially in the United States. Why? Because there's shortage on taxis. In Boston, there are only 1,300 registered taxis. In entire Los Angeles region, there are only 1,600 cabs. So the problem is that over the last years and decades, those independent limousine companies evolved. You know, everybody of you guys probably know it. You've been picked up from the airport and dropped off. It's very, very common in the United States. In Germany, and especially in France, it does not exist. So first, when we started my drive, we thought we are going to copy the same thing as Uber and then sell it off to Uber and make a fortune on it. But unfortunately, it doesn't work. You have the supply side, so the drivers, they simply don't exist in continental Europe. They simply don't exist. So we thought leveraging our synergies from six, you know, we can buy cars pretty cheaply. We buy about 280,000 cars, worth about three and a half billion. So we can, you know, leverage the synergies there. And we own, we know how to operate large fleets. So that's what we do in my drive. We're doing about, to give you an approximation, about 250,000 rides a month, doing about 30 million worth of revenue in the first year of our startup. So this is pretty successful and I'm quite happy with it. I'm three minutes in. If you want to have some questions, I'm happy to take it. So please forgive me, I didn't talk about healthcare. Maybe I could get a little bit excited. And if not, it was happy dreaming. Thank you so much for your attention.